Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial number 90. Now in our last tutorial we left off, we were setting up our input manager in Unity to use our custom inputs. So we set it up for the negative button to be 4 and the positive button to be 6 on our number pad. And let's go ahead and open up Mono Develop. And I'm going to add a new private Boolean value up here. So I'm going to call it private. It's a type bool. And I'm just going to call it rotate. Man, I just cannot spell that word today. Camera key. Equal, uh, we'll better say pressed. Make it really descriptive. And we're going to start this value off equaling false. And I'm going to come down into my update function. And I'm going to add an if statement here. And I'm going to check to see if my input dot get button down. And we'll want to check to see uh, what axis, what do we name that axis? We call it rotate camera horizontal buttons. We'll want to see if this one is pressed. So I'll come in, put some quotes, and just cut and paste it in. And if it is pressed, then we'll want to set the camera button, oh, sorry, it's rotate camera key pressed. We'll set it to true. And I'm also going to make one for when it's, when we let the button back up. And we're going to set it back to false. This way we can tell when the key, the key is being held down and when it's been let back up. So we're going to come down into our late update function and we're going to want to accommodate for having our keys being pressed. So the very first thing we have in here is we're checking to see if the target equals null. I'm going to want to add a line in between there and our first if statement to see if our camera button is down. And this is where I want to put the check to see if we're holding down the button or not. So I'm going to say if and then underscore camera. Uh, can't spell that today either. Uh, it's rotate camera key pressed. If it is, we'll want to set the X and the Y value. So I'm just going to cut and paste these lines. Paste them in here. Now I'm not going to bother with the Y right now, but for the X, I'm going to want to change where I'm getting the value from to the axis that we just created. So I'm just going to paste that in there. And since we still want to check to see if the camera button's down or not, we're going to change this if statement to an else if. So basically the way this is working is it's going to come in and check to see if we have a target. If we do have a target, we're going to see if we're holding down the number 4 or the 6 key. At least that's the way I have it set up for me on my keypad. And if we're not holding one of those keys down, then it's going to check to see if we have the right mouse button down. And if we don't have the, mouse right, uh, the right mouse button held down, then it's going to slowly move the camera back to where it's supposed to be. And now that I look at it, we're setting X and Y uh, every frame back to zero when, <clears throat> when we're not holding the any buttons down and that's it's a small optimization but we don't want it to be resetting it to zero every time we should actually move that up here and we can just simply add it to when we're putting the values to equal faults so I'm just going to put some curly braces in here so anytime the button is let up, we're going to reset these values. So I'm just going to cut and paste them right out. And I'll post them up here. Actually, I'm going to post them first. Tab them in so they're lined up properly. And we'll probably want to have it down here as well. There we go. It's a small optimization, but we might as well just get it now. 
So let's go back to our input manager. And if we look, we don't have anything set for the gravity, uh, the dead zone, and the sensitivity. Uh, basically, gravity is how fast we want it to set back to zero after we let go of the button. And I'm just going to start off with a value of three. And the dead zone is um, basically how soon you want it to respond to having it being pressed. And you usually want it to have it fairly small. We'll just say zero, zero, 001. Well, I'm just going to say zero, 001. And the sensitivity, how sensitive do you want it to be? I'm just going to say three as well. Now you can play around with these values to get the desired effect you want, but I'm just going to test it out and see how it works. So I'm going to hold down the four key and it seems to be rotating the wrong way. And the six key. But that's no problem. I can just come in here and just switch these values around. So we'll make this a six and this one the four. And when we start it back up, there we go. We've got the edits and we didn't have to do any changing our code. So now let's set up the Y value. So I'm going to come up here, make it a 20. And as you see, it just copied the last one. So I'm going to go back into model develop and get the name that we're calling this axis. So it's this one here. And I'll just cut and paste that in for the name. And just quickly update the descriptive uh, names. So all I really got to do is to save vertical. And the same for the negative descriptive. Now for the buttons, I'm going to use the number 8 and the number 2. Now I shouldn't have to change any of the other values. But I'm just going to save it off. You know, if I do, I can always come back. I'm going to go back into Mono Develop. And I'll just cut and paste where we have these lines here. Actually, we don't really need to cut and paste since we're doing the exact same thing, uh, setting the value. What we can do is just add an OR statement. And then we can just say, if we're holding down the buttons that we're using to go left and right, or we're holding down the buttons that we're using to go up and down, and I want to make sure I have the name right. So just to avoid some errors, I'll just cut and paste it in. So if I'm holding down either of those four keys, then I want it to be set to true. And the same thing for letting the button, button up. I'm just going to check to see if I actually let the button up for the up and down key. And then for the final thing is we just have to change the value or where we're getting the value from. So instead of getting it from mouse Y, we'll get it from the new axis we created. I'm just going to save that off, go into Unity, and I have an error. So input helps by fix the spelling. Come back and our errors are gone. Now it might cause a little bit of hitching if I let if I'm holding both buttons and I let one go. But that's okay. We have the up and down working right now. And left and right. So there we go. So one thing I did want to go over before I ended this was uh, if I come up here and create another one, 21, we'll notice it copied the previous one that we had before, and it has the exact same name. Now you could use this to have multiple different inputs. Instead of using, if you open it up, you'll notice you have alternate keys. So let's say you had more than one key you wanted to use for your negative and positive buttons. Let's say you wanted to rotate the camera up uh, if they're pressing you know the 7, 8 or 9. So you could easily put in you know the 7 and the 8 but you'd also want to be able to put the 9 in. 
So we could easily just copy the one we had before and come in and just change the value. So I'm going to switch it to the 9 and the positive button will be the 3. And when you start this up, if you hit the 9 and the 3 key, you notice you get the exact same effect as if you press the 8 or the 2 key. So it's kind of just a little FYI, you can have axes with the same name and in code it just saves kind of having to input them multiple times. But anyway, that's it for this tutorial. And let me just quickly delete this one because we don't need it. Uh, next we're going to be working on player movement and working with the animations. So I'll see you then. Bye bye.